Okay. Uh, I've been doing this sort of unofficial series of dilemmas with uh, certain individual gear in uh, Valheim, specifically stuff in the Iron Tier and some stuff in the Bronze Age. But the Iron Age specifically has got a lot of weird stuff because you can go into the mountains early, use a stag breaker, ping the ground 120 meters or above, and if you see the message too hard pop up without any obsidian deposits nearby, because they'll also proc too hard message, then you have buried silver, at which point you can just grab an iron pickaxe, go up there, not grind pretty much any more iron uh, related to whatever item is going to be outclassed by the silver variant of said item, and then you can get that early silver variant, and it will just outclass almost everything. Now, I'm using Huntsman Bow here. Huntsman Bow is one of those things where a lot of people skip using this exact same method. Huntsman Bow is actually something that I would never, ever recommend skipping, because it is, well, a little bit special, and... Uh, Actually, a little bit better than the Draugr Fang in this instance. It has a hidden property. It has a 4 meter aggro radius instead of every other bow's 8 meter aggro radius on its arrows. And this means that you can aggro one target, even if it's really close to a bunch of other targets. So you can isolate a lot of creatures, just take them out extremely easily. Uh, I'm using it to isolate uh, one locks out of a group of three. And I'll just ping these guys, even though. I'm pretty new. I just it's just, just a quality one hunts and bow. I've got a variety of random stuff in my inventory just because I've been uh, grinding a variety of different things. Iron, silver, iron, silver. And uh, the iron mace specifically also in my inventory is just specifically extremely good for stone golems. So I definitely make and max that. Uh, I make the iron buckler also so that I can tango with stone golems. Before I can make the Silver Shield. Uh, silver Shield only really outclasses the Iron Buckler at relatively low uh, block levels until it's uh, quality 3. But still, it's only like 20 silver, so it's super good to make. Still, Iron Buckler for those golems at that point is just very, very good to get rid of them and get your Crystal Stocks up high. Uh, crystal Stocks so that you can buy, or make, not buy, the Crystal Battle Axe. The best wood farm wood chopper that we have still in the game. Because it has a cleave even when it chops, the chop value uh, hit to hit on, on these trees, on these targets, these logs, at two targets or greater, even just at two targets, it's going to be better than a quality for Jotun Bane. Not kidding. It's It's absurd. Really, really good. So, of course, when you're hitting three, four, five targets because you have a tree farm, it's by far the best thing. And it's going to be way, way better to just go for, say, Crystal Battle Axe when you jump up from the Bronze Axe compared to spending so much iron on the Iron Axe or the Iron Battle Axe. It's just called the Battle Axe. And here's the dilemma for today. It's two and one. We have the Battle Axe and the Iron Axe. I don't recommend making either of those because they are both very much so outclassed by the Crystal Battle Axe. And the Crystal Battle Axe is not terrible to get. Uh, I actually quite enjoy messing around with it. Uh, I've been investing with axes on this specific character. And it's been a lot of fun just killing A-bombs and leeches and such. But uh, now that I have this Frostner... We've got Huntsman Bow. A lot of my verticality is sorted. So the normal verticality of the axes, uh, one-handed axes move set when I'm killing leeches, that's already gone. I'm set. I'm going to have an iron sledge soon, so that's going to be even more taken care of. The, uh, ch the slashing damage, of course, is going to be covered by the Crystal Battle Axe. And so there's no reason for me to just not jump right into that crystal battle axe from my quality for a bronze axe that I have. It's just going to be super smooth. And, uh, I mean, I'll check this out. Bonk middle mouse followed up with perfectly spaced bonk. I love the frostner so much, man. Oh, it's so much fun. I don't even need the buckler there. Just frostner. Even quality two frostner. It's so nice. But even then, what 
buffs do we give the Iron Axe and the Battle Axe in order for them to become truly relevant and unskippable and interesting? How do we make them a meaningful choice to make, whether you want to bring this or make this or go ahead and make the other one? Well, right now, not as much meaningful choice, very outclassed. I think we could buff them the classic way, give them an element. Personally, Lightning is my go-to. We're, sh we're terribly, terribly short on Lightning weapons. Uh, I know I've already talked and said in my previous videos, okay, Copper Spear could be Lightning. That would be really good for it. Uh, no, Copper Spear, Bronze Spear. And then, like, the Iron Sword could have Fire or Lightning. I think it could have Fire. And then maybe your... Uh, Iron Axe could have lightning. That would be cool. Although, here's like the big question. One-handed axe, do you think of that as more a tool or a weapon? It's really both. But most people in the devs seem to look at it, one-handed axes like tools. Because, well, it's, it's an axe. Chops wood. You have it historically for convenience for a bunch of other factors, and then, hey, you can also bring this into the battlefield. It is a logistics choice, not a overall, like, complete effectiveness choice. Usually for slashing, you'd bring a one-handed sword in. And the Vikings did that historically with, like, especially at the higher end, like Ulfberts. Mm-mm-mm, Crucible Steel. Gotta love that. But, uh, yeah, two-handed, your Dane Axes, those are legit. And so your iron battle axe, your regular battle axe, it's like, well, they're definitely trying to make those into proper weapons. And I can tell that by the mechanics of the middle mouse poke and all of that. Maybe we make that one lightning, and then we continue onward from there. So I think battle axe, regular battle axe, give that one lightning. Uh, I know that one-handed axes and uh, just axes in general, they can have different chop values. They, they just do have different chop values than their damage values, so... Uh, I'm looking at the Jotun Bane right now at quality 4. Let's not have it at quality 4. Let's have it at quality 2. And it has 85 slash 40 poison, but the chop value is 73. And that's at just one target. Single target, you're hitting for 73 chop. So they're very much trying to make axes eventually into proper weapons, but by giving them a special attribute. So I think one-handed axes could have something uh it might just be a precedent that they wanted to set at the mistlands age because of the eider mm, could be i still don't think that the iron axe really deserves to fall behind in this aspect uh, i think it should have some sort of bonus with chop or and or uh, just normal effectiveness in combat to where you actually want to make it. Not outside of just like, oh, I'm going to arbitrarily uh, build a bunch in between these two ages, so I'll just make this and just not go up, get the Crystal Battle Axe for some reason. But why would you actually, thinking just of the mechanics, totally optimally, why would you make that? And honestly, I think, I'm trying to think, it's, it's difficult. It's really difficult. Lightning works. I think lightning just works. That's tough. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of iron weapons could be like really good as in uh, with a synthesis style of crafting, which doesn't exist right now in Valheim, but being able to use, let's say, iron tools eventually to make some sort of really cool steel tools in a reforging of sorts. I think that would be sick. Like, oh, it requires this this axe. And, you know, of course, presumably it could also require the Jotunbane. But, I mean, thinking about it, it's like, the, well, the Iron Axe is cheaper than the Jotunbane. So there'd be a reason to craft it then. But it would just be a recipe at that point. But if you're going it for the, for the recipe, you might as well use it at that moment, right? So that would be a good reason to craft it. I do like the idea of steel synthesis. Being able to forge uh, new, better weapons with old weapons and maybe some mats. Oh, I love that concept. Same goes for like armor too. Lovely, lovely concept. Oh, just 
take that stuff straight from Final Fantasy IX and then add a little bit of flair in it. You know, it's like, oh, instead of just gear plus gear, we can do gear plus gear or gear plus mats. And then we absolutely go bonkers with the different possibilities. Whew. All right. I think that's what I'm settling on for the regular Iron Axe. Have it be a recipe for a future Steel Axe. I know that's a little bit of a more pie-in-the-sky idea compared to, say, the Lightning Battle Axe, which seems weird because Lightning Battle Axe is definitely more fantastical of an idea than the more realistic reforging an Iron Axe with like more carbon and other things involved in a Crucible Forge to make a Steel Axe. I think that would be very cool and kind of fit, almost fitting. Like it reminds me uh, of something that could be worked in with the whole concept of flametal that we currently have in the Ashlands. Uh, that's most likely going to be kept as part of the Ashlands. But I don't know. Let me know what you think. I don't want this video to drag on too much. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys some other time. Uh, for these videos that just creep above. 10 minutes, I love to turn mid-roll ads off, so if you get one, YouTube's being a little little weird. Uh, definitely, if, the, if it's like 15 minutes, if it's sub-20 minutes, I like to turn mid-roll ads off. I don't want to be that fucking guy. Thank you for watching, I'll see you guys some other time. Bye!